Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes mini review. Today we're going to be doing part two of sculpting putties. So just before we begin here, I just want to mention that I was encouraged to take a look at Sculpting Putties again from a few viewers uh, who commented from the first video. And if you want to uh, see the first video on this, then um, I'll have a link at the end of the video and it'll be in the description as well. So um, I'm not going to get into some of the background on these materials. Uh, except in the ways that um, they were requested that I extend the review from the previous one that I did. So, um, basically, we have uh, three uh, tests that I wanted to do uh, that were recommended. One was to see um, how long it would take to cure. Uh, one was to see um, how well they sanded, and then also was requested maybe how well they carved. So I thought we might take a few uh, attempts at some slices out of these rods. And then um, lastly, we're going to take a look at um, press molding them. And I got some, well, we'll talk about the press molding when we get there. So let's take a look first at where we're at. Uh, so first we have, uh, wait a minute, and I'm going to try, I'm trying a little bit of a new camera. There we go. Set up. So we'll see how this works out. It's always, always modified. So we've got, um, basically, I pared this down to the three uh, main, <laughs> the three main materials, uh, Milliput, Green Stuff, and Procreate. And Procreate, um, I was examining in the past, uh, in the first video at a 50-50, uh, same with uh, Milliput, same with Green Stuff. That's what's here. It should say 50-50. Then somebody suggested um, that they mix them. So I thought we'd do a 50-50 Milliput Green Stuff mix, a 70-30 Milliput Green Stuff mix, and then um, Procreate on its instructions say that you can do, um, of course, a 50-50, but then they also make some recommendations that alter its properties. Um, so this was 60 black and 40 white, 60% uh, that is. So what I did for the first uh, row here is to try to tell when they became unpliable. They were just resisting being mushed, all right? And I was like, how do I cre create a standard for this? So I have this pipe wrench, all right? This is uh, for getting up behind your, your sink, actually. Um, it's a pain to use, uh, but it's got some heft to it. Uh, I don't know exactly what I'd weigh this in at, but, you know, let's say a pound maybe. And so what I did is I took this end, and at each time interval, I took it and I just rested it on it for, um, oh, you know what, I didn't stop watch it, but let's just call it a 30-second count. The point being, it wasn't so much how much it pressed, but whether it pressed at all. Um, and I got fairly consistent results as I moved down. Uh, I tested them every 30 minutes, um, and I started, well, don't worry about it, I started at 2 in the afternoon, uh, but 30, 60, 90, 120, uh, 150, and then I, as I got to the end, I noticed some were starting to set up, and I didn't want to miss them, so I increased the time, the decrease the time interval down to, um, one, you know, about 15 minutes a split, and after that point, which was three hours, I called it quits there. Uh, so, what did I learn? Um, first, that the milliput cures the fastest um, with its 50-50, cured in two hours. Now, okay. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, I'm looking. I may tweak the contrast a little bit so you can see some of the nubs in here, but you can see them here. Uh, there's some pretty good light angle on that, and here, and here, and of course, here. And then there's some here. So like I said, I just kept going until I reached a point where I put the X, whereas I didn't notice any denting happening at that point. And mm, it's a soft number, all right? It's not firm. Uh, and in fact, if you feel there's a little something there, little something here, um, but you know, it's pretty much, we'll call it set. So um, the uh, Milliput uh, set up in two hours. 
The green stuff, you know, you could say it got another tick here. So maybe almost somewhere between two and a half and three hours. So longer working time. 50-50, um, not surprisingly, actually, we fall somewhere in the middle of those two. Uh, the Procreate, uh, the 40-60, uh, gave it a two and a half hour cure. And then when you do a 50-50, you're getting a three hour cure before any of the, uh, before it's done. And then the Milliput and green stuff, when I add a little more Milliput, you know, you can see here, I got that sort of, sort of, it was two and a half. Nah, you could maybe say uh, two and three quarters, right? Which is kind of what we would expect based on the original numbers here. Um, one thing to consider, though, when we talk about these being workable is that it's not workable in the way when it began. You can see how deep the, the impressions were when it was starting out, and then it gradually you know, became more and more difficult to work with. So when you say cure time, you may be thinking of a working time that you can actually sculpt it. And in which case then we're pretty much looking at, you know, like around here for these materials, maybe, maybe up here. Um, so we're, we're somewhere. In fact, green stuff, you know, hmm, it's weird because it starts to set up, but it takes a long time to finish. You know, so you're looking at maybe a 90 minute window for most of these for actually being able to push them around aggressively. Uh, but of course, once they start to set, that changes your ability to sculpt them. And you may find pushing that down a little bit in time may give you the ability to uh, create some different textures that you couldn't get when it was uh, really soft. Now, I don't know. I didn't do any practicing on this. Oh, why am I doing that? They're all in frame. I don't know. Have it. Is um, carving them. Um, so I'm just, I don't have a, you know, a force meter, so I'm just going to give you my impression, which is certainly unscientific, but this is a brand new, uh, Zacto blade I just, uh, put on here. So that's, that's pretty easy to carve actually. Kind of feels nice. Oh man. And the green stuff, uh oh, I'm going to slip and cut myself. The green stuff is like, it's got a much more of a clay feel, whereas this is, um, you can see how it's rolling up, it's, uh, you know, fracturing, it's much more brittle. And uh, here, I would expect, oh, well, that's interesting. That's a little bit closer. Boy, that's hard. Really? That's interesting. Now, the green stuff just cuts like butter. And the milliput, you know, I wonder, it's getting the hardness of the milliput and the resistance to fracturing that the green stuff has. So you're getting actually a harder material. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that. I really feel like oh, that's, that's hard. All right, well, that, hmm, I would not have expected that. Uh, and the Procreate, um, and boy, I don't have, you're gonna have to watch the first video to know uh, which is which for the hardener. I can't remember which is which, but we're going to just look at it, uh, the 4060. Oh. So kind of green stuff like, but definitely a firmer material. I was just curious if I could just cut out that little V. What does that look like? There we go. It's a nice smooth cut though. Here it is at the 5050. Oh, <laughs> that is, that's harder for sure, for sure. And in fact, maybe on par with the, no, see this has got a little more, a little more of that fracturing that the milliput has. And then um, here's the more milliput, less green stuff, right? 70% 70 per, 70 uh, milliput. Man, I tell you, I can't, yeah, little bit, oh yeah, all right. So it's, man, that's that's really nice though. Man, that 50-50 for easy, accessible, relatively low cost, you know, how to stretch your green stuff dollar because it is more expensive. The Milliput really, whoa, really makes um, a nice uh, blend in with this and gives you a little bit more of a working time. So I don't think I'll ever be able to cut through these. So we'll just use the carving as the proxy for that. 
for the second experiment here. Well, somebody asked about carving and sanding, actually. That was the comment, if I recall correctly. So um, when I, I recently bought these, these are um, like uh, nail uh, buffers or whatever, and I got a set of them, um, and there were a whole bunch of grits in the set. This is the um, 100, 180 uh, grit, and they went up to like 4,000 for polishing. I don't know. I have mixed opinions on it. I got these for, you know, getting into small areas and I thought I could, you know, trim them with a knife to get in a little tiny corner and work it. Um, hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna have to play with these more. Anyway, that's what this is. Got these off of uh, Amazon, I think. Um, and it's the OptiFlex, right? So it's got a little give. But it's not about this nail emery board. So what I thought I would do is um, we'll, we'll uh, do 100 grit. We'll do 180. And I would just try and sand off a little bit of the texture. I just took a blade and just pushed up a little ridge in the middle just to give a sense. I guess it's probably going to pair well with the carving where I would say the milliput is going to do the easiest and the green stuff uh, maybe the hardest because it's kind of got a rubbery texture. Again, I don't have a force meter. I'm not going to count the number of, uh, you know, strokes I do. Strokes. Um, I'm just going to give you a little impression as best I can. I'm using a pretty moderate amount of force, though. I won't kid you. Oh, of course, then my sander is going to get all... That was one of the things I didn't like. Yep. Hmm. See, the sanding doesn't really... Oh, boy. <laughs> this isn't going to last the whole uh, run, and I can't. All right, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do these four straight across. Oh, man. What kind of experiment is this, Mike? What kind of experiment? Oh, and I'm using... Oh, yeah, that is the 100 side. Okay. No, I can't do that. I can't do that. That's not good. All right, I'm going to try and just capture the edges of this. Well, all right. I feel like that can give us a good look at least. And uh, here's the uh, other side of that, that area of the emery board here. Oh, a little crazy there. So this is 100 grit, you know, and 100 grit is a fairly aggressive grit. And certainly, you know, it's no 60. I mean, obviously, but all right. And uh, let's try to procreate. And uh, let's try a little further down on our board here. here where nothing has been mm. so this is not I don't know I'm not happy about the technique of this test but I will say that none of these really show any significant wear I mean obviously right I'm taking off material but um, I mean I guess you could look at the amount of powder near it for a judge right we can see that the milliput but of course it's it's yellow so that's not a very fair comparison because the procreate is coming off in a light gray which is harder to see yeah you know i would say i would say sanding them for a polish for a smoothing out of very small rough areas is probably going to react pretty uniformly across them for you and removing a significant amount of material from any of these is pretty much hopeless unless you have like a, a dremel or you know something similar that can really get some force on there well all right you know what i can see right away actually this is shedding more material which is kind of cool actually because right it's more impervious to cutting but more easy to sand 
Oh God, science boy, what's the reason for that? The particles, the, the particles, the molecules are more likely to shear. Oh gosh, how would the bonds be, right? The, mo the molecular bonds are different in one direction than the other. Mm. Well, all right, I'll think about it. There's probably some uh, material chemist watching this who will put out some kind of quick explanation that makes a lot more sense. But, um, you know, if you think about it, it's like if, if the molecules are, say, bonded like this, right, trying to pull them apart by pulling them like this is very difficult. But if you try to pull them apart like that, it's easier, right? Except this direction. So maybe the way the molecules are interlocking, right, where it makes it stronger for cutting and uh, but easier to shear off thin layers. I don't know. My honest opinion, not a big difference across all of them. I would say look to be smoothing surfaces with sanding. Don't worry about trying to fix any. And I would probably, I don't know if we'll be able to see that um, in the uh, camera. Um, so I'm just going to give you my impression. It might show up though. You know, these, these are pretty scratched up. You know, so you're really going to want to go in. If, you, if you're trying to smooth, you're really going to want to go in with a really fine grit. I usually, if I'm trying to get a very polished uh, surface, I'm going in with at least 320, 400 um, to get it really, really smooth. All right, so there's sanding, as uh, questionable as that was. And taking my time here. All right. And so I thought we would do, I don't believe anybody mentioned this, but it occurred to me that, oh, don't pay attention to this. I changed this since I set it up, that we might do a, a press mold. Uh, experiment since so many people use um, Oya Maru. Now, I, I didn't have any until just now. Oh, how about we keep it in the frame? Okay. Um, Oya Maru is a, oh, if you're not familiar with it, um, it's sold as Insta Mold as well. This is not an Oya Maru review. Here's a bonus review um, because this is enough of a review for it. This is a mini, mini review, micro re review. Um, it's sometimes sold as Instamold. Don't buy it that way. It's more expensive. Um, you can buy these uh, on eBay. It's uh, six sticks. I cannot remember what I paid for it. Seemed like a lot, but it really wasn't, especially because it's reusable. And uh, I was surprised right when I took it out of the box, right? So it's got a, a rubbery texture to it. It's got a, a consistency, I mean. And what you do is you plop it in some hot water. You leave it there for, you know, like boiling water, you leave it there for maybe five minutes. It becomes pliable like a gel. And then you can um, squish it up and then push it onto an object that you want to make a mold of. And then when you demold it, it's self-releasing and you get a really nice cast of that. I, or mold, I should say, I was, really impressed. I don't know. It sounds so silly. How many years have I been making terrain, making molds, and how long has it taken me to finally get some damn Oya Maru in my studio? This is the bomb. You know, for making small molds, it captured the detail absolutely perfectly, which is pretty crazy when you're squishing it on there that it doesn't trap bubbles. I don't know how that's doing it, but man, I could see bundling up you know, like four of these sticks to make something a little bit bigger, making a quick mold. You could rip out some plastic in here as long as it doesn't get too hot when it's curing. Okay, so there's my press mold. And I thought, now these have been sitting out for quite a while. Um, so I may have to zip ahead when I do some of this mixing because some of these, it's a little chilly. But I thought we would mix up the exact same that we had over here. Uh, Milliput green stuff, the 50-50, Procreate, Procreate 50-50. I did my best to try to, you know, measure these out and the Milliput Green Stuff 7030 blend and then do a quick press mold and see um, how, you know, difficult it is to capture the texture. So I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to mix this up. All right. So 85% uh, mixed at this point. Um, and it occurred to me actually before when I was even setting this up that, you know, it may not really be, so I'm just going to push it in. 
all right, I'm not, while I'm, while I'm doing this, I'll talk. Um, it may occur, it occurred to me that it probably would be best to let this set up. So I might not be able to get any legitimate results for you from this. We'll see how easy it is to pull them out. Um, of course, if you wanted to rip out some casts quickly, you'd want to be able to pop it out, but it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to warp. Um, but uh, actually, it's not too bad. Uh, you know, I don't know about this camera angle because uh, I feel like I'm blocking the camera with my hand, but we'll see. That that was quick and easy. Looks great. All right, let's do some green stuff. Give me a minute to mix these up. In the interest of time, I'm going to call that mixed. Mm. Man, though, green stuff. It's, it's, I'm not looking forward to the Procreate. It's really, you got to work it a lot more. All right, so let's just jab that in there. Oh, I don't have as much, but it'll be all right. This is the classic, right? Everybody uses green stuff for their press molding. Um, normally, you would let that dry. Cure, I should say. It's not drying. It's curing. That's different. And I'll tell you what, in the interest of time for the video, as well as my finger strength, I'm not going to do the 50-50 and the 70-30 because both of these work well and blended, both of them are going to work well. Um, so really, I can't see any reason to do that. And in fact, um, let's do the Procreate and I'm going to judge whether to do the second one after we test this out. So give me a second, we'll mix this up. All right, so here's my Procreate blended. Um, I'm just gonna make it into a little bit more of a regular shape here. Actually, I don't see how this wouldn't work either, but I'll do it just for the sake of the sake of science here. What little science I'm actually exhibiting. Where's my control? Where's my replication? I don't know. Where's my force meters? All right, press it in. And uh, It comes out great. I'm in love with this stuff. I know, I know, I know. It's ridiculous. There's going to be 16 people who watch this video, at least, who say, I can't believe you haven't had any of this in your studio before. I don't know. Sometimes it takes a while for great ideas to trickle down to people who are focused on other things. But um, I'm really, I really like its ability to stretch, to demold. You could probably do some objects even with some relatively, you know, noticeable undercuts and still be able to get them out of this. How awesome is this stuff? Anyway, so there's a mini review of press molding in the midst of taking a look at these materials. But I really, if I were to sum up any, any of this into something more useful, um, I would say really what you're looking for really in these blends is going to be cure time and overall hardness and, you know, the mill putt green stuff 50 50 you're getting a really a rock hard material at the end um, that is maybe easier to sand and um, has a reasonable setup time a little extra working time than mill putt but sometimes green stuff takes forever to set up so um, that's something to think about and uh, procreate um, you know definitely in the green stuff range for cure time um, but um, much harder than green stuff. And of course, it depends on the blend that you're using. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that. And um, this is a little bit more of a top-down view for um, doing this. I haven't, I've been, I realized that I'd rather not be lifting this up because it moves it in and out of the depth of field and gets kind of wonky. 
Um, and with the brighter lights, I'm able to light this a little bit better and increase the depth of field. But if you really don't like this angle, and I'll, I'll take a good look at it when I edit it because it's you know, hard to see on the screen. If you don't like this angle though, you know, pick a video where I did uh, an angle that you liked better and let me know. Um, because really in the end, it's a viewer, you know, you, you're the ones that are supposed to get the most out of this. Uh, so uh, I want to, you know, produce uh, an, a camera angle that works best for you. And I think actually um, I would improve this by throwing another light from this corner over here. Uh, and I could do that actually pretty easily. And then it would knock back some of these shadows that I'm creating when I move my hand. So anyway, that's the tech talk. Let's go wrap it up. So hopefully you found that uh, helpful and, uh, and uh, I'm working on it. If you have not seen part one of the Sculpting Putty review, which included other tests as well as their price uh, slash cost comparison, um, I'll put that link uh, here. Here, that's right, I can embed that link here. So I'll do that um, so you can dash over and take a look at that. And I found it kind of nice to do this actually because I had never looked at Oyamaru, so it was a great excuse to uh, buy some and do some press mold testing. And also the thought of mixing green stuff in Milliput, I can see it definitely having some big advantages. So I was really glad to have viewer feedback to help uh, encourage me to examine these materials a little bit more. And that's why I always say, I say it all the time, but I mean it, you know, I feel so much like this is a two-way exchange. I really value the suggestions and the, uh, the uh, recommendations and the links to other things that you guys uh, send me. Um, so thank you. And uh, I found this uh, valuable for me, so I hope you found it valuable as well. So uh, stay tuned to the channel. I don't know what's coming up next, but I'm hoping it'll be another ocean board update. We'll see. But uh, until then, you know I'll be back soon with another Terranscapes video. So hopefully you found that inter... Wait.